Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This will be a video about Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power episode 3 and I feel like we just got a lot of fan service in this episode. At least if you watched uh, like read the books or seen the movies like ah oh, so much so much. Let's start off with the base information. This episode is written by Jason Cahill and Justin Doble and the episode is directed by Wayne Shi Yip. Now let's just get right into the episode and let's start off with the Southlands. Arendir is taken by orcs in, in the last episode, in episode 2, he was taken by some mysterious hands and it turns out to be orcs and he has been taken by orcs to an enslavement camp with other elves and the orcs refer to Morgoth's successor as Adar, an elvish word and you know these these elves they obviously don't want to be enslaved like come on now so they are like planning an uprising and as soon as Arendir gets there there's pretty much an uprising like he's like why are we just doing nothing man like let's do something and we have an uprising and they they obviously fight doesn't really work out too well their escape is foiled eventually and Arendir is brought before the Dark Lord himself Adar or Sauron as he is better known as. Now apparently this it, it, this series not, is not as straightforward as we may think because apparently this may or may not be Sauron. We are not really sure. There were, I saw uh, like an image online that was like four different people and it's like the audience is like oh that's Sauron. I mean people speculate it's like the wizard or it's like the elf in this episode that we see Adar. Or it could be someone we haven't seen yet, like from like some trailer or picture stills that we have seen. We just don't know yet. And I myself was not on that on that ship. I just thought that hey, this is pretty simple. Here we have Sauron. He is right here. But they just had to go and make it very very complicated and keep it a, a mystery. And it makes sense that they're not really showing Sauron yet. I mean it has only been like three episodes so or maybe they have shown him and we just don't know who, who it is but very interesting to see who, who he actually is gonna be because it's, it's gonna have to be an elf because there's no way it can be the man that was shot out from the sky because he doesn't have elf elf ears I don't believe and apparently Sauron himself is an starry or something like that I heard that somewhere so it could be possible that he was shot out of the, sky, of the sky but that doesn't make sense again because we knew Sauron predates that that guy being shot out of the sky so it does make sense that it is him so it's gonna have to be like Adar I'm 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 sure I'm sure it is it's gonna have to be an elf because otherwise it doesn't make sense now back to Galadriel and Hellbrand her male friend companion and they are saved at the end of the episode or episode 2 by a mysterious figure but they are saved by Numenorians. Elendil, once of a noble line, now a sea guardsman and his son is Isildur? Now, I was a little taken aback when they just mentioned his son casually that he is Isildur but we obviously know Isildur is the one who is gonna eventually defeat Sauron and take the ring for himself. They are taken to the ports of Numenor the westernmost of all mortal realms. So this island is like flourishing. It's such a nice island, I'm not gonna lie. It kind of reminds me of a much, much bigger version of Gondor. Or like, what was it, the actual fort called? Like Minas Ithil, I think? Or was it Minas, Minas Tirith? One of those, I can't really remember. I watched like the movies like four weeks ago or something like that and are already forgotten. Like I watched the movies before I watched uh, The Rings of Power even though The Rings of Power was out by the time I watched them and I also watched The Hobbit trilogy extended editions of course before I even touched The Rings of Power and are already forgotten. Numenor was given to the men by the Valars because they aided the, the elves in the fight against Morgoth now not all men did but these these did these men did the Numenorians and yeah they were gifted this beautiful island away from Middle-earth yeah there is some something that 
might or might not happen to the island depending on the outcome of something. Now in the Great War with Morgoth, the Numenorians stood with the elves and your boy Halbrand was not one of the Numenorians. Halbrand's ancestors actually stood with Morgoth. So Halbrand is like, apparently he, he, is, he is not what he seems. And yeah, that's not a good sign that he stood, stood with Morgoth. So, and he is from the Southlands as well. So the Southlands are... The Southlands is connected to like the Dark Lords. Man, it's, it just seems like every human hates like elves. They're like really, really racist. I'm not gonna even gonna lie. And then we have the Queen Regent Muriel, who is ruling in her father's absence. He's been exiled to to a tower. Then we have Elendil, who is Isildur's father, who shows Galadriel to the Hall of Lore. Because he is not one of the the elf haters. I mean, his name Elendil literally means elf friend, and he he speaks elvish, so or some some kind some some elvish. I don't know if he's fluent in elvish, but he speaks elvish, so pretty cool there. Now we get to some really interesting stuff. Is that once Elendil shows Galadriel to the Hall of Lore. She finds some very intriguing information, and it is that the Southlands seems to be a precursor to Mordor. Now there is this the Sauron, like sigil or like symbol, and it looks like like fork. But if you turn it to the side, it's like the mountain range of Mordor, mountain chain of Mordor, and we have been seeing teased, teased with the sign. Like since episode 1 and my dumbass didn't figure it out but you just had to turn it to the side and it's pretty much what is to become Mordor. So the Southlands are to become Mordor that we all know and love. It is revealed that Halbrand is indeed the king of the Southlands and he is gonna have to right his ancestors wrong for fighting with by Morgoth's side instead of with the Numenorians and the Elves. So is he gonna fall into his ancestors legacy and fight by the side of the Dark Lord or is, is he gonna have to you know rally up his people and actually fight against the Dark Lord this time. Only time will tell. But yeah Elendil means Elf Friend, High King of the Dunedain, King of Arnor and the King of Gondor. Obviously Isildur is his son, so he becomes King of Gondor, High King of Arnor, and and King of all the Dunedain. So he, he he is gonna he is one of those blessed with long lives like Aragorn, who is obviously an ancestor. Now back to the Hobbit folk, or what I believe to be the Hobbit folk. They have been uh, I don't know, is it's like a democracy there and if you break the laws you be get the caravan, aka left behind. So the Hobbit folk are like, uh, what do you call it? They migrate to different places. Now this is where I believe that we are gonna find Hobbiton or the Shire. They are gonna establish that because right now they don't have one one home, and I believe at some point they are gonna establish or found the Shire or the Hobbiton, whatever it's called. But as of right now. If you break the law, you get the caravan, and what that means is that you pretty much get left behind. And Poppy and Nori was was almost left behind, but this nice dude was fortunate or nice enough to put them in the caravan, but at the back of the caravan. So that's like the most dangerous place to be because. If you can't keep with the up, up with the others, you get left behind, and that's not a place where you want to be. And their caravan actually breaks, or their like their trolley that they're carrying the stuff in actually breaks. So they're on the verge of being left behind. But then the stranger actually comes to help the hobbits because Nori has been a friend. He he she has been. I believe it's a she. Pretty much the actual actor is a she, so she has been helping him, and you know he he 
they're friends now and I just glossed over why they were being the camera and it's because she has been like helping this stranger, this giant and the Hobbit folks are not too happy with that and they, she brought an outsider into their stuff or their like whatever. So yeah, that is pretty much breaking the law, but the stranger helps the hobbit stay with the caravan. Obviously he is like a giant compared to them, so he's gonna have a pretty easy time with the, carrying the caravan. So yeah, that was nice to see. Now this episode has been very, very intriguing in, in my opinion. We get a blurry glimpse of the elf known as Sauron in all his elvish glory. We finally get, or I say finally, we get the backstory of Mordor, the Southlands that are to become Mordor. Yeah, I'm purposefully not watching the previews for the next next episodes because I think the trailers are enough. And then I also want to talk about, is Creative Liberty with already existing works okay? We have seen it before that they take creative liberty with already existing work, even to an extent the New Line Cinema Lord of the Rings movies, take some creative liberty. Now they stay like kinda true to the lore but they change some things and there are events in the books that happen differently in the movies. So yeah, they did they, 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 they take some, some creative liberty but it's like who cares man, the, the, the movies were phenomenal masterpieces man and just because it didn't stick exactly to the books doesn't mean it's not bad and sometimes directly translating something or taking something from the book to a visual medium doesn't really work you are, you are gonna have to change some things and if they literally just took stuff from the book and put it in the movies i don't think it would have worked and it would be like a like 40 hour movie like the first one only do let me know, is Creative Liberty with already existing work okay? Game of Thrones, I believe se season 7 and 8, they like, there was like no source material for those final two seasons and is that okay? I mean, people hate hate those seasons, to those two last seasons, but is it okay to have Creative Liberty with already existing work? Let me know, what is your opinion on this topic? But yeah, this has been episode 3 of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power by Amazon. And another good episode in my opinion. I'm really, really enjoying this series. And yeah, I can't wait to see actual episode 5 when that comes out. But yeah, I will see you later, Lord of the Rings fans. Goodbye. The world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air.